We are sensitive to the move of God. We know that He wants to bring our eyes to see more of what's available to us as covenant children. For this, He has prepared a vessel to open us up to His amazing promises. A conveyor of the supernatural healing power. A quintessential minister that is breaking men out from the shackles of evil into the marvelous realm of light. Let's welcome a revealer of kingdom truths, a passionate and unique minister, the co-founder of Teradez Ministries, Carly Teradez. There we go. Been here two seconds and we're already destroying the place. Are you excited? Are you excited to wine press 2023? Come on, I'm excited. My goodness, I know that the Lord has something so special and so exciting for you this evening. And you've been here a long time anyway, so you must be the radical believers. You must be the believers that are ripe and ready to receive from the Word of God tonight. Is that correct? Can we give Jesus some praise? Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Amen, amen. Okay, take a seat for a moment. I know that you are excited, but I want to get straight into the Word of God tonight. And the Lord has shown me that there are, there are so many people that He knows, He has planned it this way, that they're going to receive their miracle this evening. Amen. God is not holding back on you. Somebody needs to say that out loud. God is not holding back on me. His miracle is for me. Tonight, I shall receive. I believe and I receive. Amen. Let it be unto you according to His word tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I was praying this evening, the Lord was showing me to start with a verse that really ministered to me. How many of you love the Word of God? Amen. He has changed my life, changed my life. You know, the Word of God is not just a book. It is not just a manuscript. It is anointed. It, it is the manifest presence of God in a text form. Amen. You know, the Lord sent His Word to heal us. Psalm 1720. So I want to look here. This, this scripture was the one that changed my life and really enabled me to receive healing from years of grand mal seizure epilepsy. Would you like to know what scripture that is? Okay, get to your Bibles here. We're going to look at Deuteronomy 30 and chapter 19. It says here, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I've set before you life and death. Say life. Hallelujah. Blessings and curse. Say blessing. Therefore, this is like a test where the Lord gives you the answer, right? If you didn't know what the answer was, if you didn't know which one to pick, he gives it to you right here. He says, therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Now, when the Lord spoke this to me, I was in a ladies' Bible study in the afternoon. All the, the, children, uh, the older children were at school and the, the little toddlers were with me. And I was, I was there in the moment with my, my lady friends and we were, we were praying and we had a time of meditation. You know, sometimes God needs a moment of quiet in order to speak to you, right? We need to be able to hear His voice. And sometimes that means getting ourselves a little quiet in order to, to be able to tune in and hear Him in the busyness of life, in the chaos of everything that goes around us. And in that moment, I heard the Lord speak this verse to me. And I didn't know where it was in the Bible, so I had to look it up. But when I read it, I realized I got excited I got so excited and the reason was I had grown up believing that everything about my life was already planned out, that, I had, that there was no part of it that was for me to, to be involved with. But yet when I read this, it burst on the inside of me because I knew that God was involving me. He says, I have a choice. How many of you know that God has chosen us 
Amen? He says, you are chosen. You are blessed. You are highly favored of the Lord. You are the accepted in the beloved. You know that you were accepted before you were rejected. God pre-approved you. Amen? You may have thought, and that is worth an amen. Come on. That is good news. Hallelujah. You may have thought you came here tonight and it was your choice and it was just, you know, the, the decisions that you made. But there are some things that God ordains, He plans for you ahead of time and when you're walking with Him, you follow in His ways. You are not here by accident. Say to your neighbour, I am not an accident. I was planned by the Lord Most High. This is a God incident, amen. You are here by design tonight. God has a plan for us, and it's a good plan. It's a good plan. You know, when I heard this verse on the inside of me, the Lord challenged me with something. He said, this epilepsy that you have been managing, how many of you manage diseases? You just learn to live with them. Do you know that God never planned for you to just live with disease? He created your body with the ability to heal itself. Healing was always God's plan for you. Amen? Always God's plan for you. This isn't something, healing isn't something that is just reserved for the super saints, for for the people that have been to Bible college or seminary. No, this is for every believer. It's for everyone in here today. And when he said to me, you know, this epilepsy that you have been dealing with, you've never let me in on it. I need you to choose life today. Man, it just went off like a rocket inside my head. Like, this is something I've never heard before. And I went home from then. I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to show me in your word. You're going to have to show me what you mean. And over the period of two weeks, over the period of two weeks, because my heart had some things in it. It I had some junk in the trunk in there. Right? Can anyone relate to that? Maybe you've had some wrong thinking. Maybe you've had some wrong perceptions about God. Maybe it's even hindered you from receiving His promises at some point. That was me. And as I went home over that period of two weeks, what the Lord began to reveal to me, He showed me in His Word that Jesus had a healing ministry, that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when I realized that, I said, wow, you know what? If it's in the Word, then it belongs to me. If it's in the Word, then it belongs to us. Amen? If it's in the Word, then it's ours. If He said it, we can have it. Amen? And after two weeks, I went back to that lady's Bible study, and I said, Lord, I choose life. I choose it with every fiber of my being. I choose to live. And I switched. In my moment, the Lord, in that one moment, the Lord showed me a picture of a light switch. And he says, when you're ready, in your mind, I want you to take that and I want you to choose life by flipping the switch. You flip the switch of disease to the off position. And man, that was all I needed. I'm like, Lord, I'm doing it. I'm ready. This is my moment. This is my wine press. Amen. Say, this is my wine press. (laughs) And you know, in my mind, as I switched that disease off, nothing happened in the natural. Nothing happened. I went from there and no one could see it on the outside, anything that was different. But on the inside, something had changed. And I knew it. And let me tell you, that was 19 years ago and I've never had a seizure since that day. Never had a seizure since. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, I believe that God is no respecter of person and what He, what he did for me, He's going to do for you. He's done for you. Why? Because in His Word, He has promises. In, first, in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, it says, All of the promises in God, in Christ, are yes and amen. He's already said yes about you tonight. I said, He's already said yes to you receiving healing tonight. All that's left for us to do is say, Amen. That's for me. Amen. Right? I agree. All of His promises are yes and amen. But here's the kicker. They don't come to pass automatically. There is no accidental miracles here, okay? You didn't just wake up one day and find out, you know what, hallelujah, I think I got saved in my sleep. No one does that. It's response required. His promises are yes and amen, but we need to respond to those promises. We have a part to play in this. And I think a lot of people get stuck here because they have a wrong perception of who God is. Either they think he's mad or he's angry or he's God Almighty somewhere out there in the distance, but they don't see him as a loving father with an intimate relationship. 
You know, if we have a twisted perspective of who God is, we are going to struggle to come boldly to the throne room of grace and take a hold of everything that belongs to us. You know, sometimes we struggle with this. In our world, when we don't always keep our word. Sometimes we say things and we don't necessarily 100% mean them. You know, has anyone ever found themselves? Can anyone relate to this? Right? This is like a confessional, okay, right? Come on. Everyone's done this, right? You say something and you don't necessarily mean it. Well, the danger with that is, A, your body hears that. Every cell in your body created in the image of God has spiritual ears to re- and it's tuned to respond to the sound of your voice. You see, God created the world with words. That's why he put life and death in the power of our tongue. So when out of our own mouth comes words that may not be true, our body cells goes, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Pass it on to all the other cells in the body. So when then you start to use your authority as a believer and say, you know, you know what, Bob, I might have symptoms in my body, but by my by your stripes I'm healed, and your body doesn't respond, part of it is because your body's thinking, I don't think she really believes it. I don't think she, I've heard her say stuff like that before, but I don't know, I don't know. What do you think? Pass it on. Confusion starts to manifest through the cells in our body. But you know, when we come to understand God according to the correct biblical perspective, We start to right-size that wrong thinking. And this doesn't have to take a long process. You know, the first miracle that I believe is going to happen in somebody's uh, body tonight is the miracle of their understanding being opened. We can can renew our mind to the truth of God's Word. It's a miracle. Father God, I thank you that you have given us ears to hear and hearts to understand and a mind to comprehend everything that you, you, you say tonight. Man, let the cells of our bodies rejoice because they hear and respond to the truth of God's Word. So it's important that we make sure that out of our mouth, we get an agreement about our body, what the Word says about it. If we want to access the promises of God, we have to get into agreement with this. You know, ignorance, unbelief, misunderstanding held me back in sickness for a lot longer than I needed to be. But once I understood that God wasn't angry at me, that he was a loving father. You know, faith works by love. That's how it works. And faith is how we access this promise of healing tonight and any other promise, actually. But I want to look at something. This is in Hosea 4, verse 6. It says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, the knowledge of what? The knowledge of the goodness of God. You see, if we don't understand that God is good and only good and only gives good gifts and only has good plans and good thoughts about us, we'll start to believe a lie of the enemy that tells us otherwise, the lie of the enemy that wants to keep us sick. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on listening to that one anymore. I listened to it long enough. You know, God is not letting us down. This is another thing that a perception that we can break. Maybe we've had people in our life that have consistently let us down or harmed us or neglected us or not treated us um, with the proper care that they should have done. God is not like that. We cannot relate to him like we relate to our earthly, in our earthly relationships. You know, in in Hebrews 13 uh, verse 5, I like to read this in the Amplified. It, It says this, God said, I will never in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. How many people could do with a little support here or there, right? Come on, look, he says, I'm not going to leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you. This is what God's saying about us tonight, right? We can trust his word. Nor will I let you down or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Imagine this, right? Imagine your father. Now, now some of us have maybe haven't got fathers. We, didn't, we never knew our father. So this is a little challenging. But I believe with the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do this. Imagine Father God, God Almighty, reaching down from heaven and holding your hand like a parent with a child. That's the truth. That's the reality of this scripture. He's holding on to you. When you go to cross the road, now I've noticed that the traffic is intense, Right? I mean, when you cross the road with a little child, you're going to hold their hand really tight, right? You're not going to let your grip on on that child's hand go. You're going to hold on to them. It doesn't matter if they're misbehaving. It doesn't matter if they're trying to pull away from you. It doesn't matter if they're having a tantrum, if they're being rude or ugly. It doesn't matter. You as a parent are never going to let your grip loose on that child. That is just what your father is like with you. It's just what your father is like with you. There is nothing you can do 
to change his mind about you. Amen? There is nothing you can do. Why? Because he chose you before you chose him. You were already chosen. It's too late. He's madly, wildly in love with you and there's nothing you can do about it. That is the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Going down into verse 6, he says, So we take comfort. This is Hebrews 13, verse 6 in the Amplified. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, The Lord is my helper. This is personal. The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. What can, no, I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? There is no power in hell greater than the power of God on the inside of you tonight. There is no demon in hell strong enough to stop you receiving from God tonight. Amen. God has already possessed you. He is taking you as his very own possession. Man, this is so important because right perception of God creates confident children. You know, when our children are secure, when they know that they are loved by their parents, they grow up to be bold, to be confident, to be fearless. Amen. Everything that the devil dreads is on the inside of you. Let me tell you, when you woke up this morning, the devil was like, oh no, they're awake. Why? Because when he looks at you, he sees your potential. He knows that you're dangerous to his kingdom, amen? We don't need to be afraid of sickness and disease. We don't need to be afraid of of the enemy's attacks or, or, or physical lack. We don't need to be afraid of these things because what we have on the inside is far greater. If only we'd come into agreement with it. You know, confident children, they run boldly to the throne room of grace when they need help and aren't afraid of failure. You know, when fear is pushed aside, faith is able to move forward. Okay, the, the, is the greater the attack, the closer they press towards the Lord. Confident children, the greater the attack, the greater the pressure that surrounds them, the, the closer they push towards their Lord, their Savior, their helper, their comforter, their healer, their provider, their deliverer, amen, their Savior. We don't ever need to let sin cause us to run from the Lord, only to run to Him. Let me tell you this, there is nothing that can disqualify you. There is nothing that, can do, that you have done that could possibly discuss. We have, the, we have God backing up our words, if only we were to speak them. Speak the word. She said, if I'm going to touch the head of his garment, that's, what I'm, that's, that's, where, that's where my healing's at. She said it. If I may touch his garments, I shall be healed. She, does, she determined out of her mouth the method by which she was going to receive, and she determined the outcome. She spoke the end result from the beginning. She could not see her healing yet. This is a woman that shouldn't even be in that place. She probably crawled on her hands and her knees to be in that crowd. She could have been stoned for even being there because she was unclean. But she risked it all because she heard of a man that went around doing miracles. She had a hope. She had an expectation that started to rise up on the inside of her. And so she said, when I touch him, the only possible outcome from this event is that I shall be healed. That is powerful. I believe it's the same for you. You know, God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for this woman, he's done for you. Let's look at the interaction he has in verse 34. Verse, this, is a, this is the same chapter, verse 34, in the Amplified It says, do to your faith, your trust and confidence in me, springing from your faith in God, has restored you to health. Has restored you to health. Amen. He already made his mind up that he wanted it well. God had already predetermined healing, remember? He'd already created her body with the innate ability to overcome sickness and disease. That's why if you hurt yourself, your body heals itself. So don't come at me arguing that it isn't God's will to heal. Then why is my body created to heal itself? Right? It's a, natural, it's a natural thing within the body. So it says, God, your, you know, your, your trust and your confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health. Now go into peace. This is really important that we see this. Go in, into what? Into peace. And be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. What does this mean? He's, you know, if you study this out, this go into peace, what he was saying was, you need to stay in relationship if you want to stay well. See, you can receive a miracle tonight. We're going we're gonna to pray and we're going to speak and those words are going to carry power. And when they hit you in the flesh, 
Those words are going to bring forth life. They're going to bring forth healing. They're going to bring forth authority that drives out the power of the darkness from operating in your body. But when you go from here and there's no one around to lay hands on you, there's no one around to speak the word from you. This is what he was saying to her. She was already healed. She was healed the moment she grabbed a hold of Jesus' garment and the power went out and healed her. She was healed then, immediately it says. So why is Jesus now saying here, oh, but hang on, daughter, when you go into peace, when you stay in relationship with me, then you are going to be healed again, right? He says, he says, to be continually healed and freed from. You see, you can receive a miracle, but if you want to stay well, if you want to walk in divine health, you can't do that outside of Jesus. Even unbelievers can receive healing. There's no one that's excluded from the, from the goodness of God. But if you want to stay well, if you want to walk in divine health, now you can only do that by the power of God and an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Man, that is so powerful. Let us look here. This is the last scripture I want to look at. This is, um, this is in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. And then we're going to do a speedy fast prayer because you know what? I don't see Jesus praying long prayers. He said, be healed, Right? And they were healed. So we don't need to be super religious about it. We just need to get to the point. Amen. Look at this. This is Second Peter chapter 1. Look at this. Verse 3. Look at this. Come on. You know what? This is so good. We're going to do verse 2 as well. Huh? Why not? It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. How many of you want grace and peace multiplied in your life? Come on. I know I do. I need some of that. It says, it comes through the knowledge of God. And through Jesus our Lord, this is not talking about a casual knowing like someone you just met on the bus and got chatting to, right? No, this is talking about an intimate relationship, like a marriage relationship. There's a level of intimacy here. It says, this is how we access the promises of God. Look at this. is in verse 3. His divine power has given to us all things, say all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that you're ever going to need to live a healthy, successful, fulfilled, directed, focused life is right here already. It's been given to you. Hallelujah. I need to stop looking for something that I don't have and start using what I've already got. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm loaded. I'm packed full of the blessing of God. No wonder the devil's afraid of you. I'd be intimidated if I was him. He says, look at this. His divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. There it is again. Who has called us by his own glory and excellence and he's given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. And here's how. So that through these things you might become partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. How do we access the promises of God that grace has already provided? We have to participate. We have to become partakers. Now, no one can eat your dinner for you and, and it be good for you, right? How many of you have eaten today? Some of you. Some of you have forgotten. How many of you have eaten this year? Okay, some, some more of you. Okay, that's good. Here's the thing, no one can eat a meal for you and it be good for your body. It'll be good for their body. So in the relationship with God, somebody else can't participate for us. This is personal. Somebody else can't get saved on your behalf. Somebody else can't get healed on your behalf, right? This is participation required. It means if we want to have access to these promises, how many people want to have access to the promise of God tonight? Come on, you need to look a little bit more excited than that. In the overflow. How many people? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. All right, have I got some people that understand in here that they are locked and loaded, ready to receive? Have I got some of those people? All right, here's what I want to do. And I've got five minutes and 40 seconds left. So we're going to make this really quick. The Lord spoke to me and he told me a list of conditions that he knows people have come with tonight and that he, his power is here to heal. Now, God, his power is here to heal everyone tonight of every single condition. Let me make that clear. But specifically, I believe God has shown me some things to encourage you in your faith. So what I want to happen is if you are sick and you want to receive, I want you to stand up right where you are. Stand up in your seat right where you are. If you're sick and you want to, you're ready to receive healing, just stand up right where you are, wherever you are. Do it quickly. Don't worry about You don't need to look at your neighbor. 
right? Is your body, stand up. There we go. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Now the people, have you all standing? Some people are a little slower than others. That's fine. Okay, we can wait. Now the people around them, I want you to go lay hands on a neighbor. We are the body of Christ. And believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen? Okay, so if you're in a row, you can just, and you're all standing up, that's fine. You can lay hands and make a chain. That's fine. You don't need to move. Just make sure that people are standing up. Have a, you can lay hands on your neighbor. If you want to receive, we're going to lay hands on you tonight. Amen? So lay hands on, you can hold hands if you're more comfortable with our hand on the shoulder, okay? Let's not get too intimate here. We don't, we don't need to do that. And we're going to pray. And the power of God is going to enter into your body like a thunderbolt. And I'm telling you, whether you feel that or not, we take God as his word because he sent his word and healed you. He didn't send a goosebump or a feeling or a feather from the sky. No, he sent his word and healed you. So whether you feel God's power or not, we trust by faith that he's entered into your body and sickness and disease cannot, cannot remain. Amen. So right now, let's just begin to pray in tongues quietly. Father God, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters here. And we release that healing power that's in their spirit to flow out through every part of their flesh, from the top of their head to the very soles of their feet, touching every part of them, every bone, every muscle, every sinew, every organ, right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We take authority over swollen ankles, over weakness in the left leg. If this belongs to you and you'd like it to go, just wave at me. If you've got swollen ankles, I see that hand at the back there. Problems with the left leg. Try geminal nerve pain in the face. Right now, we take authority over that in Jesus' name. Weakness in the arms and the hands. Become strong right now. We declare strength in your muscles, strength in your nervous system, strength in your bones. Receive that in Jesus' name. We will speak to polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome. Issues of the fertility right now of irregular menstrual cycles. We come on healing into your reproductive organs right now in Jesus' name. Periocarditis of the heart. Right now we speak healing to the heart. Shortened limbs. We say grow. Limbs, grow. Become straight right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Bone deformations, myelitis, and inflammation of the spinal cord. Be gone right now. Pain in the back. Be gone. Herniated discs. Be gone right now. Spine becomes straight. Crumbling of the bones right now. Become strong in Jesus' name. Somebody's getting strength in their knees. They're getting strength in the in weak parts of their body. You need to move. You need to bend. You need to stretch. You need to do something that you couldn't do before. Ischemic heart disease, high blood pressure, clotting disorders, eardrum rupture, conductive hearing loss, infection in the uterus, and unsteadiness, neck issues with the neck, torticollis, neck issues are tight on one side or tilted. Right now we command that neck to move and be strong from side to side. We take authority over every limb, over every joint in the body, and we say, move as you were created to. Smooth as you were created to. Someone needs to bend down. They need to touch their toes. They need to check that hip pain because it has left your body. Arthritis has left the building. Lord, we thank you. We receive every good and perfect gift right now in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is good to us.